with songs they have sung for a thousand years. The hills Three dollars and fifty cents is what I was told when I was a kid. That's all they had between 12 of them when they arrived. Uh -huh. You know, by that time, uh, Maria and the Baron had uh, two more children and one on the way. That was our father. Yeah. So uh, they actually arrived with nine children and their choir conductor. So 12 of them with $3.50. The Sound of Music, based on a true story, is one of the most successful musicals of all time. In the final scene, the Von Trapp family is crossing the Alps, escaping the Nazis. Talk about a cliffhanger. What happened to the Von Trapps after the closing credits? A lot of the most interesting things happened after the movie ended, and it's too bad they weren't able to tell more of that story. After my family left Europe, they came to the United States. They traveled and sang around the United States, uh, continued to travel around uh, the world and tour, settled here in Vermont in 1942, and made a family home here on a farm, which has continued to grow over the years. Until now, we've got 2,500 acres, uh, a hotel, a uh, brewery, amazing outdoor recreation uh, with the, the cross-country skiing, what we're the most famous for. My father started the first commercial cross-country ski resort anywhere in the Americas here in 1968. So why Vermont? Our family chose northern Vermont uh, because someone offered them a, a home here and they just fell in love with the geography, with the people, the hard-working, self-reliant nature of the Vermonters reminded them of the Austrian mountain farmers and they just, they just felt at peace here. One of the great things that uh, my sister and I have been working on the last few years is history tours here. And we make sure that if a family member doesn't lead the tour, that we finish it so that people can actually ask uh, questions of a Von Trapp. And has helped to bring us closer to the sound of music because we, we see through our interactions with these folks, we see how much it means to them. The movie now seems like history writ large. But how true was it? Well, the whole skeleton of the story was accurate in The Sound of Music. Uh, my grandmother Maria actually did leave the Nonberg Abbey to go stay with the Von Trapp family. And the fact that, my, that our grandfather used the whistle, uh, the bosun's whistle, to call the kids, that was actually real. <coughs> Making the play clothes uh, out of the curtains was real. One of the original children who could be loosely compared to Louisa in the movie has uh, one of our grandfather's uh, old whistles and still remembers at the age of, uh, I think the last time I heard her whistle it, she was 97. And she remembered the calls for each of the different children. Lisa. Friedrich. Louisa. Kurt. Brigitte. Martha. What did the movie get wrong? So the main things that were not accurate in The Sound of Music, um, well, first of all, anyone who's been to Salzburg knows that if you cross the border in Salzburg, you're crossing into Germany. Not a prudent way to escape. So our family actually took a train to Italy. There were two more children born after Maria and the Baron were married before they left Austria, so the time frame was condensed. Uh, the names of the children were all changed, and the eldest was actually a boy, uh, not a girl. My grandmother did sell the, the stage rights to her book. Uh, for $9,000 cash, uh, which she was very happy about uh, at that, in that era, uh, but with no rights to the future. However, at the generosity of Lindsay and Krauss, who wrote the libretto, and Rodgers and Hammerstein, who of course did the music, uh, they actually insisted that the family be uh, cut back in to a tiny percentage of the revenues. So that was actually very, it's very small, less than a half a percent, but it, uh, it never hurts. A big family, the Von Trapps, in the movie. How big now? In our family, uh, we are 27 first cousins, and the next generation, the great-grandchildren, uh, there, I believe last time we counted, there were 80-something. So, <laughs> and I'm hoping to add to that down the line. <laughs> so we try to maintain our, our family's spirit and, and traditions here today um, through continuing to maintain this connection with nature. That's always been a, a really important part of my family's life. And when they lived in Austria, they were climbing the mountain behind their house, um, so here, helping our guests to get out and enjoy nature, uh, whether it's through a really exhilarating cross-country ski or maybe through a, a very short hike right around or just appreciating the gardens, but, but maintaining that contact with nature and that healthy uh, spiritual connection, I think is so important. And whenever I leave Stowe and I return, I'm able to see it through the eyes of our guests and really appreciate what it is that we're offering them. And that, that makes me appreciate even more 
uh, what we offer here.